you've been a bit. There you go. What's mm. Matt mad about this week? Um, yeah. Yeah, there's the TLDR, which is um, I talked good shit about the Resident Peaks when I first encountered them because I thought happy. they're really cool, really interesting. I was like, man, I'm looking forward to getting. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting the bit. The upgrade for Poke Poke, where I can slot him into the Corliss Atoma, because there's clearly an Atoma there that I'm supposed to use up here to progress in these Resonant Peaks. Because I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Oh, I've not been getting... Oh, ooh, I'll figure this out. I'll explore. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't go back after getting the Corliss upgrade, because I'd forgotten, didn't have time. Then, of course, this week's campaign happened. And what did this week's campaign do to the place that I thought was interesting, because I was exploring it by myself? I don't know, because I haven't played it yet. So, <laughs> uh... Quest markers. What? So, the you need to get these ciphers on the wall, on the walls and around the place. You find them, click them, then you can go to the next area. You refill your cosmic uh, power by killing a bunch of um, dudes and standing in the beams of light. Then you get your power and teleport to the next place. And you kind of look around and look for, you know, uh, look for the ciphers, etc., etc. But this was just, um, I did it with a, as part of the quest, as part of the campaign. And because it's World of Warcraft, the quest objective is just, there it is. I didn't have to look for it. It told me everything I needed to do and then pointed me directly to uh. where I needed to go. And it was all just quest objectives and quest markers. I'm like, this... So close. Yeah. You're so close. Yeah, but it's it's a thing that really struck me how much I thought it was cool. And then I did it as part of a campaign quest. It's like, this is just boring now. This is boring because I don't have to look for anything. I don't have to think about this at all. It's literally just the NPC says click the thing, get the bar, teleport. And it just tri trivialized it so bad, it turned it into, it turned it from this little exploration, this little puzzle, into nothing. Into, I've closed my eyes and content has happened. That's what it felt like, honestly. So, okay. Uh, There's a severe problem that came out with mm. two games called Skyrim and Dark Souls. Yeah. And I was just waiting for, you know, every mm. single article involved to be like, mm. This is the Dark Souls of Skyrim. <laughs> you know, like, just every drawing the comparisons. But mm. I, I would say, one of the things that people have loved about Elden Ring is that it doesn't have, a, you know, the quest objectives or anything like mm. that. It's just like, you know, you talk to the NPC, you work something out yourself, you discover, you explore. Mm. Uh, so that's why you have felt so enchanted by Elden Ring. Mm. And I think that's maybe also why you felt very interested by the Resident Peaks, because you walked in, you're like, what's this? Oh, What do I do? You discover something. Yeah. So then what happens is that, you know, it's just, it just turns into a quest marker as an objective, and it's almost like the gameplay verb mm. has changed from explore to complete, right? Yes. It's like, that's what the quest marker does. Mm. Uh, and, you know, obviously, complete is the end goal for both of them, but I mean, like, the verb by which you get to that end goal. Mm. Uh, you know, the less directed it is, then the more it, like, relies on the player. Um, I don't want to go too deep in this because we actually talked at length about this. Yeah. But it's just a lot of it is about, like, the design, um, just some design in Elden Ring. Basically, mm. it's, it, the video is kind of, uh, it's like the Souls Souls games really impacted, like, the next decade of game creation. So we just had a chat about, yeah. you know, uh, could Elden Ring do similar? What will happen when developers start to be inspired by Elden Ring? If you want a fun little WoW example, the rare mobs in Mist of Pandaria, which were, I mean, they kick your ass if you did them wrong. Oh, yeah, just kill you. Like, yeah, those are directly inspired by Dark Souls. Yep, because the, everyone's like, oh, hang on a second. And I'll, certainly yeah. that, you know, easy and accessible, but mm. very punishing mm. combat model, we saw that in the time of the Siles with its rares. Yep. And it worked really successfully there. So that's even just a good example of Blizzard taking a few inspirations from the Souls games. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think it's a, like it is a blue post, I yeah. believe, where we so, yeah. we learned that there's a Souls inspiration there, which I, I mean I thought was a neat little bit of uh, you know sort of game trivia. Yeah, it's like so. There's uh, there's Dark Scream Android saying the quest doesn't at all reveal the true secrets or exploration of the place though. I don't like it anymore. That's the problem. Where if I the the zone itself is now framed as that to me. Because it's just, I, you know, maybe I'll go back and try to do it again now that I kind of know that. But, like, to me, I, in my head, is categorized as, oh, the quest took me here. Oh, I'm done now. As opposed to that natural sense of exploration. Yeah. That's just, that's what it feels. That's what it feels like to me. It's really quite, really quite annoying that you can flip, like you say, but the gameplay verb swapping from, uh, you know, you're, you're accomplishing the same goal, but I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the mini map and then going to the place in the mini map as opposed to using my eyes to look at the world. It's like the player's internal cognitive fantasy yeah. in a way. Yeah. 
right? Where it's like, you know, just do, sort of do thing versus explorer. Like, those are very different in your brain. Yep. I imagine. So anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I think, a fair point. Um, they may have missed opportunity. 